Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013. I'm your host, Leanne McAdoo, and here is what's coming up tonight. Tonight, veterans are denied access to their own memorial park. Then, can Obamacare fines be seized from your bank account? And is the president visiting Asia to push the TPP? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Don't listen to him. Listen, he's the kook saying the government can't be trusted. He's the kook saying there's tyranny. He's the kook saying they're buying billions of bullets and armored vehicles and preparing a new, uh, a, an illegal war. Tonight's top story. World War II veterans were threatened with arrest if they chose to visit the World War II Memorial in D.C. during the government shutdown. Veterans make the expense-paid trek to D.C. via the Honor Flight program, but when Honor Flight of Northwest Ohio's President Lee Armstrong contacted Park Services to find out if they'd be let in, he was told they'd be arrested. I said, are you kidding me? You're going to arrest a 90 or 91-year-old World War II veteran from seeing his memorial? If it wasn't for them, they wouldn't be there. She said, that's correct, sir. Well, in spite of that threat, today many elderly veterans, some of them in wheelchairs, broke through the barriers set up around the memorial as police, park service employees, and tourists looked on. Armstrong said, the Germans and the Japanese couldn't contain us. They weren't going to let barriers contain them today. They wanted to see their memorial. Now, this happened one day after 200 members of the greatest generation refused to let the government shut down, keep them from visiting the memorial in their honor. Now, nobody was arrested as a result. But can you believe this? Our veterans were threatened with arrest for fulfilling a dream of visiting a memorial that is meant to honor them. But it turns out Obama only honors veterans when it serves his purpose of sending us to war with Syria. Uh, Ty said he was hoping to take his children around Washington to show them uh, the sights and the history. Uh, but uh, Jaden, Madison, if you want to know what makes our country truly great, if you want to know what a true American hero looks like, then you don't have to look too far. You just have to look at your dad. Because today he's the sight we've come to see. Uh, your dad inspires us, just like all those big monuments and memorials do. Said, are you kidding me? You're going to arrest a 90- or 91-year-old World War II veteran from seeing his memorial? If it wasn't for them, they wouldn't be there. She said, that's correct, sir. Well, it turns out Obama knew about the veteran's request to visit the memorial during the budget battle, but he rejected it. The White House and the Department of the Interior rejected a request from Representative Stephen Palazzo's office to have World War II veterans visit the World War II Memorial in Washington. So, Palazzo helped the veterans commit an act of civil disobedience against the Park Service on Tuesday, when he accompanied the heroes as they stormed through barricades around the closed memorial. It probably costs more to put up the barricades around the park to keep the veterans out than it would have cost the government to just leave it open. But because Congress ruined Obama's plans to go to war with Syria, he is playing hardball with them when it comes to his New World Order-backed Obamacare plan. So the veterans' request wasn't the only one that was rejected by the White House. They have also rejected the House GOP spending bill. That's right, Leanne. The headline on Infowars.com reads, Government shutdown. Pentagon spends over $5 billion on military and spy equipment. The U.S. Department of Defense awarded 94 contracts worth over $5 billion, including purchases of spy satellites, body armor, and drones on September 30th, the day before the government shut down at the end of the federal fiscal year. This also included about $50 million in Reaper drones. And that's at the same time that we have this. House rejects GOP's piecemeal spending bills. The House on Tuesday night rejected three appropriation resolutions that would have funded the District of Columbia, veterans programs, and national parks after House Republicans set them up in a way that required Democratic support for passage. Now, I personally am not a Democrat nor a Republican, but it seems to me the Democratic Party is saying that you, the Republicans, will be held responsible unless you give us exactly what we want the way we want it. Now, to be honest, there are some Republicans who rejoice in this government shutdown, but to say that it's the Republicans' fault that veterans are being kicked out of their own memorials is completely ridiculous. We'll go back to you, Leanne. 
Nancy Pelosi had this to say about the Republicans. She said they took hostages by shutting down the government, and now they're releasing one hostage at a time. And she's not the only Democrat who's really ramping up this terroristic rhetoric when talking about the Republicans. Uh, I, I think the only phrase that describes it is political terrorism. Nice uh, global economy you got there. You want to threaten to not only shut down our government, to, but to blow up the world economy unless we go back and undo what we did according to the processes of our democracy? How dare you? How dare you, Al Gore? You're really using all those hot buzzwords to draw this vision of terrorism because they have shut down the government due to Obamacare. But nobody is talking about how the government is holding the people of America hostage with this Obamacare insurance policy to pay off the bankers. I'm personally going to have to pay almost $400 a month in health insurance premiums because I am a healthy, young, single person who just so happens to make just enough money that I don't qualify for any government subsidies. But it turns out if any of us choose to opt out of uh, you know, this forced enrollment in a private corporation by the government, we're going to face repercussions. Will Sheehan says that he tried to sign up for Obamacare yesterday, but chose to opt out after finding out his premiums for an existing condition would cost $597 a month with an almost $14,000 deductible. Sheehan claims that after he decided to opt out via the .gov website, he was sent an email threatening him with possible fines, a driver's license suspension, and a federal tax lien on his home. The federal government has consistently denied that any fines pertaining to Obamacare noncompliance could be seized from bank accounts, despite reports that last year the IRS had hired more than 16,000 new agents to harass citizens who attempt to evade the new law. And that is in addition to the more than a million essential IRS agents that are still working right now despite the government being shut down. Welcome to Obamacare. Well, stick around because after the break, I'm going to be talking with David Knight about an overseas trip that Obama is still going to take, even though the government shut down due to budgetary constraints. And then we're going to find out just how far the rabbit hole goes when I talk with the director of Take Back Your Power about smart meters. Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War, but don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior, with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the Info Wars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. InfoWarsStore.com, a conscious and involved distributor of independently made products that support a healthy and aware community. Dive into cleaner waters with your own ProPure system and Pro1D filter. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. We've handpicked a veritable treasure trove of the best non-GMO seed banks on the market. And our selection of films showcases a wealth of knowledge outdone only by our books. Check for combo packs to multiply your savings. Wear your colors proudly with one of these conversation starters. Now available in pink. Get prepared and fund the revolution at InfoWarsStore.com.
Well, in spite of the government being shut down, Obama is going to continue his trip overseas. And of course, his administration took a moment to blame House Republicans for making the president cut his trip short. National Security Council spokeswoman Caitlin Hayden said, this completely avoidable shutdown is setting back our ability to promote U.S. exports and advance U.S. leadership in the largest emerging region in the world. But never fear, Secretary of State John Kerry is already there and will represent the U.S. in the region. So are Obama and Kerry really in the region to boost our economic ties, or are they there to sell us out to our creditors? Joining me in the studio is David Knight. Well, Leanne, it was two years ago in November that Obama went and met with 25 heads of states in Asia, and he was reassuring them and also reassuring his commitment to TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The corporate media is spinning this as a way to box in China. The Obama administration is saying, no, we're not trying to punish China. We want to have mutually assured prosperity, not mutually assured destruction. But what they're going to do is they're going to have mutually assured destruction of sovereignty of all these countries. Going all the way back to Endgame in 2007, Alex was talking about how the Atlantic trade zones and the North American and the European were all going to be joined together into a kind of global governance. That's what we're seeing now. This is what they've been working on for a very long time. Stakeholders don't include senators and congressmen. Ron Wyden wanted to be a part of this. They told him he could not see it for the longest time. He raised enough of a uh, stink about it that they let him come over and take a look at the documents, not his staff. But of course, 600 corporate lobbyists can pull this up with a password at any time. So this is not anything that serves the U.S.'s best interest. Right, so we should be concerned because he's going over there doing all of these things and he'll probably bring back to Congress something to sign at the last minute. That's right. It's a fast track trade agreement. We see this over and over again. This has now become standard operating procedure. It happened first with Obamacare where they had to pass it before anybody could see what was in it. It's now become their standard way of operating that they deliver a gigantic bill, thousands of pages. Nobody has any time to really know what's in it and they're pressured to sign this. We need to be putting pressure on our congressmen to say, we want transparency, we want to know what's in this, and we need to get rid of this immediately. Well, we're definitely going to keep hammering down on the TPP because this is insane, and I can't believe he's going there while our government is shut down. It's a slap in the face. Thank you, David Knight. Well, if you think this is just the first time Obama is selling us out to his corporate masters, here's the quote of the day. Yo. Under my plan uh, of a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Stick around after the break because you're going to find out how that cap and trade system is going to be raising your energy prices. We'll be right back. my plan uh, of a cap and trade system electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket dozens and dozens of people who are reporting some really huge billing spikes in one case over 1000 percent the so-called smart grid that is as vulnerable as what we've got is not smart at all. It's a really, really stupid grid. You've got massive data storage areas that never existed before, specifically to accommodate the accumulation of this kind of knowledge. What in the world are they trying to do with all this data? Why do they need to get into our lives this deeply? What you're seeing is the establishment of a sur of surveillance society. And then they can use the system to go back in time and scrutinize every decision you've ever made. Where does it stop? At what point do we draw the line? Clever people called the technology smart to make it seem intimidating so no one would question it. What I'm finding is that these smart meters are emitting radiation every few seconds. These things that they're installing would allow them to control 
every appliance in your house. What is it that makes the government think that they can usher us into a totalitarian state at all, much less without us even noticing? They are a necessary upgrade to the electricity grid. Okay, I'll try this one more time. Legally, are you allowed to refuse the new meter? Joining me today is Josh Del Sol. He is the director of Take Back Your Power. It's a very, very important documentary that exposes the health dangers behind smart meters. But not only that, it gets into the sinister origins of the smart meters and how they fall into the spy grid. Perhaps you remember this little Disney propaganda campaign from the 1950s featuring your little pal Monsanto. The future becomes the present. The Monsanto House of the Future. One zone for regular refrigeration, one for frozen, and one for irradiated foods. That is proof right there that this totalitarian plan goes way back. Let's find out if Monsanto is one of those companies that are harvesting your data via your smart meter. Josh Del Sol, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, uh, Leanne. It's great to be on your show. So what are they claiming are the benefits of the smart meters? Well, the clean benefits, first of all, is it's going to reduce carbon footprint. Uh, overall, the smart grid is going to reduce energy. Uh, the second is increase home automation. It's going to give you more control over what uh, appliances are being used and how they're being used and what, uh, how much energy they're using. And as well as it's going to make the power grid more reliable. These are the clean benefits of the smart grid. Right. Now, does it actually give us more control or does it give them more control? That is your documentary explores that. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's we came across some pretty amazing stuff, Leanne, in this film, and we've been getting some outstanding feedback on uh, on our film, Take Back Your Power. And so these points that they're making that utilities, you know, in the industry, along with government, are, are, are trying to make, they're trying to convince the public of, we're basically just looking at the facts. It's all fact-based and we're, uh, you know, pointing out that they're complete lies. Uh, it's not, the grid is not saving energy. It's using more energy, in fact. No pilot programs have been done where smart grids are saving any energy. Uh, and also it's creating a huge hacking vulnerability. Even the former CIA director of the, of, of the United States, James Woolsey, said, you know, what we think of, what we're being told is a smart grid is actually a really, really stupid grid because <laughs> of, of all of these, you know, 440 million new hacking vulnerabilities. And the example he used was uh, a student uh, with a cell phone in China having the ability to, to you know, enter into your home through the Internet and do whatever, shut off your power, you know, shut off your appliances and, and wreak havoc. So, and, and in addition to that, it's, it's not giving us more control. It's actually giving the control to big corporations, to, to utilities and to governments who will be sharing in this data that is basically being extracted uh, from the home in a very, very high level of detail. So we have all this um, uh, documented in the film and we're just so excited to get it out there and, uh, and we feel it's extremely timely. Right. And well, and speaking of control, one of the families that you actually highlighted in the documentary there, they experienced their power being shut down for seven weeks because they refused. Well, the smart meter was forced on them. Then they replaced it with their uh, with another smart meter and they shut their power off and they refused to turn it back on for seven weeks. Right. So as soon as as soon as the uh, so-called smart meter was put on their home, they're one of tens of thousands of people that had health symptoms right away. And so they actually did a, a legal process to have the meter removed and a safe analog meter put on their their home. And many, many, you know, tens of thousands of people are doing this, and probably millions now worldwide are taking a stand against having one of these surveillance uh, devices installed on your home. 
uh, but they're they're making examples of several you know people to kind of put the fear of God, so to speak, in into into the population, so that people wouldn't do that. So yeah, in this case, the the Lawson family actually had their power shut off for seven weeks. Other families have as well. Uh, an 81 year old grandmother in Wisconsin had her her uh, water cut off uh, because of her smart water meter was, uh, you know, they, they wanted to force that upon her and, and she chose not to have it. So utilities are actually using extortive tactics uh, to force their agenda, even though people are, are voting against it. Local governments are saying, no, we don't want this. There's moratoriums and, and motions being passed left, right and center in, in local governments. So it's really a, a huge, a huge issue um, uh, that's just going to be building across the, the country and around the world at the same time. Absolutely. Your film really touches on a lot of the health effects that people are experiencing in California, in, in Canada there. So what are some of the health, uh, the health effects, ill effects that people are having from having smart meters so close to their bedrooms, to their child's crib? Right. So essentially a smart meter is a, a wireless transmitting, a two-way transmitting device that's, that has metering capabilities, but its primary intention is to transmit data. It receives data from smart appliances, which will be in your home, and they will be communicating to the meter everything that's going on in your home through the use of RFID technology, through the use of, of new technology like Verizon's smart TV, which has the apparent uh, capabilities. Uh, uh, they they want to develop technology with these patent applications to have the capabilities to detect uh, facial recognition, uh, speech, and even you know the moods of of rooms and what's being said, how it's being said, so that they can you know then immediately push back to you what they feel that you need in that moment for advertising purposes. And it's not only you know you're not only being advertised upon by you know Big Brother. But all of that information is then going uh, into the utilities who actually have admitted that they're sharing it. They want to sell your data, according to the CPUC. They're hoping it stimulates market interest. Right. And so about the sorry, I never really asked the the answer the question about the health effects. Now the health effects, according to um, mainstream science, there should be no concern with these. But the problem is is that mainstream science is not taking into account more than six thousand studies that have been published about the health effects of this type of radiation that are showing there's there's potentially serious effects in addition to the microwave low level microwave transmissions every few seconds. There's another component called dirty electricity, which is being caused and generated by the meters. The old meters did not do this. The new meters do. And it's to do with a, a, something called a switching mode power supply, which actually converts the energy from DC, from AC to DC. So that's creating this, this field of, of high you know, voltage a high frequency transients on the, the electricity in the home in combination with the, the wireless with the low level microwave the dirty electricity is making tens of thousands of people sick who never had an idea that the meter was replaced on their home so it's you know a, a lot of people that the debate is going to go on about the health issue uh, there are other more you know there are other issues that are going to be more easily proven here and now and we do that in our film but uh, we're, we're seeing some huge effects as far as you know health and we have some uh, uh, microscopic work in the film that we've done to show at the cellular level what's going on with with these meters and, and their effects on the human body right and we're actually seeing some footage right now of the cells and how they're reacting and that's just incredible the before and after after being uh, experiencing these smart meters as well in the film you uh, show aphids that are sitting on leaves and they are pulsing with each pulsation of the radio frequency that's being sent out it's just incredible um, a lot of people say that pe the people that their symptoms are just anecdotal there's no proof that they're it's actually affecting you what do you say to people that that say oh well you use a microwave or a cell phone and so therefore your symptoms aren't attributed to smart meters. Well, what we've actually done, um, uh, you know, unofficial testing. The, the thing is, industry and government and utilities have not done one single test on whether these devices are safe. Even though there's thousands of studies that show, you know, there's a problem here with this type of radiation. So that that alone blows, you know, most people away when they learn that fact. 
Right, and they actually had, was it a representative from the utilities company who they didn't do any research on the health benefits to protect the people. What he said there in the opening was that, well, that's why we gave you the option to opt out. That's how right. we are protecting you as the consumer. It's just insane. You could tell even the judges there were just flabbergasted with that. But they're really selling this as going green, and it's you know it's to make you more energy efficient. It's going green, but people there who are thinking that they're conserving energy are actually paying more. It's yeah. raising the prices. Yeah. So this is a, at least eleven billion dollars of taxpayer money through the stimulus, uh, um, you know, that was granted in two thousand nine, uh, have gone into the smart grid. So it's creating this huge financial incentive for utilities to just go along with this. So they're getting hundreds of millions of dollars in some cases per utility to push these things on. So there's a huge amount of vested interest in showing that these things are, or trying to show that these things are necessary, that they're working, that they're not causing harm, that they're not spying. So what we have here is the first time, this is the first time ever that a, a potential uh, carcinogen, according to the World Health Organization, has actually been forced upon people which also has the capability to, to surveil and spy on people, totally eradicating the fourth, fifth, and tenth amendments. And, and it's, it's doing it in a way in which it's becoming increasingly, increasingly obvious that they're, they're, you know, they're lying across the board, according to all the evidence that we've uncovered. Right. It seems smart meters are just part of a sinister plan. It's, it's taking us right into the totalitarian state. And like you mentioned earlier, they're they're profiting off of selling when you go to the refrigerator, when you use your microwave, when you turn your lights on and off, when you take a shower. That is insane. Right. And as mentioned, I mean, they've admitted that they're selling this data. And what we, we actually did some research on CISPA, the legislation, which uh, the Cyber Intelligence Security and Protection Act, which the Senate has uh, stalled. But that the biggest sponsors of CISPA uh, across the board has been the energy util the utilities, the energy industry and the utilities. So they're putting the, the most amount of support behind this legislation so that, that it can then take all the information of the private individual and just transfer it, you know, carte blanche to government. So it's becoming obvious that smart grid is a ploy to extract all the information from your home and, and make you vulnerable in more ways than one. So they're literally watching you in your home. It, yeah, it's, it appears that that's the plan. Uh, some of the, you know, the, the technologies, the ability of the technologies, according to their patents themselves and in their own words. We came across a document from a, a smart grid working group, working group uh, that uh, has plans for three years out and 10 years out. And there's words like uh, centralized intel, uh, increase intel. Uh, uh, you know, abilities and so forth. So they're, they're actually admitting in the in internal documents that we've uncovered in, in our film that this is the goal of the smart grid. Well, do you have any encouraging news? <laughs> is there anything we can do? <laughs> yes, I do. And I'm, I'm glad to report that, um, you know, there's all around the world, because this is a worldwide program, people are realizing what's going on and they're, they're fighting back. So the utilities are doing this all on implied consent or tacit acceptance, which means that if you don't say no, you just said yes. So everybody has the ability, because this is a voluntary program, it's do done so under the guise that it's mandatory. It's not, there's no legal requirement to participate in this program. Everyone can actually send their utility a letter. They can send it, uh, a, a, we have templates on our website, takebackyourpower.net, register that letter and say, I, there's under no circumstances why accept one of these meters on my home. And if you already have one, like many people do, demand to have it removed. That is your right. Uh, so what we're realizing is th that many of the processes that people are using to do this are, are effective. Uh, in British Columbia, where I'm originally from, there's tens of thousands of people who prevented a meter installation simply because they, they stood up for their rights. They, they you know, wrote letters and, and they demanded that a meter not be installed. This is happening all around the country. 
Uh, in Germany, Germany said just recently, we don't want smart meters. First of all, the reason given was cost. And more recently, it's come out that the reason Germany does not want smart meters is because of the privacy issues. They dealt with fascism 70 years ago. They still have people alive who were involved in the Second World War and the fascism that spawned the Second World War. So they don't need to go down that, ro that route again. We don't either, but we need to take, uh, uh, increase our awareness and then take action based upon that awareness. Josh, I'm sorry, we are out of time. Stick around because I want you to finish this interview. Just stay right there. All right, guys, well, I am sorry that we had to cut that interview short, but I really want to get the end of it. So if you're a Prison Planet TV subscriber, stick around after the show because you're gonna see the rest of that interview with Josh Del Sol of Take Back Your Power. And that's it for tonight's newscast. Join us again here at 7 p.m. Central. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Thank you for sticking around after the news. I'm just so enthralled with this documentary. I think this issue with smart meters is so important. I asked Josh to stick around and talk to us a little bit more. So thank you for sticking around, Josh. My pleasure. So the smart meter thing, it falls into Obama's cap and trade. There's, I know here in Austin, we were given the opportunity to uh, voice our concerns with smart meters. And one of the things that I mentioned was that why on earth do they think that the billing companies want to help us save money? That doesn't even make sense. I mean, if, they, if that was the real issue, they would have already uh, come up with free energy by right. now. Right. I mean, even Toronto Hydro, who's uh, completed their in, uh, smart meter installation several years ago, their own survey, and we have this in the film, I mean, show that immediately upon installation, 80% of people's bills went up, not down. And that's before the time of use billing comes into play. So they're going to be charging people you know, two or three times more for using electricity during peak hours when, you know, most people are making dinner or, or using energy. Uh, so, so this is something that Obama basically, uh, five years ago, he basically telegraphed in that, that clip that we saw. And it's becoming increasingly obvi obvious that there's no benefit to the, the rate payer, to the customer. Billions and billions of dollars are going into this. In, in uh, the Euro, uh, European Union, $700 billion was announced as their plans for investing into the smart grid between now and the year 2030. So what does that tell you? I mean, they're, they're banning uh, un, you know, illegal solar panel uh, energy usage in Spain. And the, the amount of the, uh, uh, the fine is something in the range of 30 million euros for using solar energy illegally without a permit or registration or whatever the deal is there. So it's, it's becoming increasingly obvious that this has nothing to do with the environment. It's harming people, it's harming the environment, and, and it's, it's taking away people's rights. Right, they figured out how to tax the sun <laughs> there in Italy. And then, and then in the, uh, one of the responses was that the reason why the bills were so much higher was because the smart meters are more accurate. <laughs> Right. Like, oh, okay. All of a sudden, yeah. So, so what's there was actually, there, and just a point on that, in Australia, th there was a, a s several nationwide news pieces that looked into the billing, you know, anomalies. Why are people's bills going up so much? And at, at one point, they were considering doing a, a, you know, a national investigation of all the entire program, uh, the smart meter program there. And uh, it, it appears that, you know, as soon as it kind of bubbles up to that point, utilities and, and corporate interests and, and governments would kind of, you know, either ramp up their PR campaigns or do whatever to sort of start to, to counteract the truth that's being spoken, which is why we made this film. So it can be like a tool that anybody can use. People are bringing the film to their local governments and, and, and sharing it with, with people to help them wake up. So, uh, Leanne, I'm, I'm sorry I, I cut you off there. I just wanted to get that, that point in. That's fine. So what what has been the response to your documentary? People are really impressed. They're really blown away and they're they're kind of shocked um, uh, about this uh, agenda that's unfolding that they had no idea about. Uh, and, and as well as people are inspired to take action. 
So we have some action steps uh, in the film on our website, takebackyourpower.net. We have uh, an action strategy guide, 10 questions for your, your utility so that you can verify, you know, for yourself what's going on with this issue. You know, don't take our word for it, but then, you know, get involved after you watch the film and find out for yourself. Uh, but the response has been hugely positive, and uh, we, you know, we have a grassroots uh, distribution campaign on our website, so anybody can sign up as an affiliate and help us get the word out, which is what we, we really need to, to continue to uh, reach more and more people. I agree. So do you think that Take Back Your Power will be on Netflix, or are you hoping to, to get it featured on uh, like the Discovery Channel or something like that, where what? it can get out to a bigger audience? That's the idea. And I mean, bigger audiences we need, bigger distribution we need. If you're out there and you have connections to to help us get the word out in a bigger way, please contact us through our website. We definitely want to open as many doors as we can. We're doing Film Fest. We're doing, we have partnered with Yekra.com. They're our exclusive digital streaming provider. You can watch the film online. We, we're selling DVDs and we just want to keep um, exploring options to get this out in a, in a bigger way. Well, we will definitely do everything we can here because I know a lot of our viewers are really concerned with the smart meters. Not only is it the the pricing is going to skyrocket health, the health issues that are connected with these smart meters, as well as the spy, the spy grid. Uh, the gentleman in your in your movie said it was the technocrats wet dream. Yeah. And it's it's insane. I'm. I don't appreciate that it's violating our Fourth Amendment right to feel safe in our home. There are just so many things that are really wrong with the smart meters, and so we're definitely going to hammer this out and make sure that as many people find out about the real sinister nature of the smart meters. But Josh, thank you so much for everything you're doing, and uh, we'll definitely be talking with you soon. Thank you, Leanne. It's great to talk with you, and I appreciate all the outstanding work that InfoWars is doing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Prison Planet subscribers, for sticking around. I really dislike when we have to cut our interviews short because of time constraints. So just remember, because you're a Prison Planet subscriber, you get the exclusive on all the interviews and all the extras, including the rants, the movies, our eBooks, the Alex Jones Show, all streaming live at your fingertips. And you can share that membership with 11 other people at the same time. So like Alex said yesterday, share it with your sister, your mother, your cousin, your friend, tweet it out, meet a new friend, a stranger. Share your subscription, share this transmission. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show. <laughs> <laughs>